Welcome back to Studio 90. We're here at Small Bar in Chicago. We are joined by the captain of the U.S. men's national team, Carlos Bocanegra. Carlos, a, a nice reception for you. You're back home in Chicago. What's it feel like to be back where you got your career started with the fire? Yeah, no, it's cool. It's, uh, I'm happy to be back in Chicago, obviously. Uh, I've never been here to Small Bar, so it's cool to check this out. And um, like I said on the way over here, I think it's pretty cool that we're doing this, uh, the live show and interacting with people. You got your career started here in Chicago, defender of the, uh, rookie of the year in 2000, back-to-back -back defender of the year titles in 2002 and 2003. Also an Open Cup championship in 2000. That was an unbelievable team you had here in 2000 with names like Peter Novak, Lubos Kubik, Christo Schwitzkoff. What was that like being on that, as a rookie, being on a team with so many talented players? Um, well, for me, the biggest thing was that uh, the veteran leadership on that team was, I mean, it was awesome for me. Coming out of, of college, I was young and, you know, to be honest, immature, you know, coming into the league. And so with guys like that, you know, uh, in the locker room, they just help you out and, you know, they, they kind of show you how to be a professional, which was nice. Not so much by words, but just with their actions and stuff. So um, obviously on the field, everybody saw the talent and that the team had. So that was nice to be a part of as well. And um, no, nah, but it was great. I love Chicago. I was a bit scared coming from California when I got uh, drafted here, but um, I've fallen in love with the city. So uh, it was cool. What were you thinking that first day that you saw snow here in Chicago? Yeah, I was just happy I got drafted, actually, but then... Was, uh... <laughs> so that was a special team that you were playing on there in 2000, but not just a special team, but the city of Chicago, the supporters for the Chicago Fire, was something that the league hadn't seen up to that point. What was that like being able to, to play in such a great crowd and, and the fans of the Chicago Fire? Yeah, that, that was cool. I mean, Chicago's a great sports town in general. I knew that. Um, but then when, you know, we had the Section 8 people jumping around all the time at the games, um, playing in Soldier Field, it was such a big stadium. But, uh, you know, they still did a fantastic job to make the atmosphere with, you know, kind of when the bottom bowl was filled. Uh, I remember a playoff game there uh, when, the, when the new stadium got built. And, um, you know, they just it made it a, a great atmosphere. And it was, it was a, obviously, it was, a, you know, playing professional sports in Chicago. It was, it was cool. So let's take a look back to this summer and the, and the 2010 FIFA World Cup. A lot of people here in the bar tonight were watching those games. The game against Algeria, yeah. right? Yeah. It's a game where the team has the, has the game for, for, for most of the time. They're pressing, they're attacking. It doesn't feel like the goal is going to come. Did it feel like that for you? Did it feel like that eventually we were going to get there and get that goal? It, that happens in soccer sometimes. It's just, you know, the better team doesn't always always win or the goal doesn't go in. And, you know, I was just hoping, like, how, how can this possibly happen to us? Like, we're killing them this game, killing them, and if they get some random goal on a counterattack, it's going to be like we're out of the World Cup. So, um, you know, through the game, everybody just kept going, and I think that was kind of a, you know, it showed kind of our whole performance in the World Cup. We gave everything every time we were on the field. And we just kept going, kept going, and it popped, that ball finally popped out to Landon and felt like the world was lifted off our shoulders. We scored. We knew we were going on. And, I mean, it was, it was an incredible moment, so much emotions. It was – I get the chills thinking about it again. But it was – oh, that was amazing. One of the biggest moments in U.S. soccer history and one of the great pictures of the huge pileup down in the corner when Landon got tackled. Notice that you hadn't made it that far. You were still hanging out at midfield. No what way. happened there? No, it was way too long of a run. I was way too tired for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the great things about that moment was the reaction that we saw back in the country. I know that the day after in South Africa, you, you saw the YouTube highlights. People from the small bar, people in places all over the country getting so excited. You, was that an emotional moment for you to see the reaction of the fans? Yeah, it was emotional. And, you know, like, I mean, we were – we were watching it in our hotel rooms and, you know, we had a lot of downtime over there. So we're on our computers and that the video kind of got sent around to the guys on the team. And I mean, I know I had tears in my eyes and it, you just, you know, you refill, you know, you, you feel the emotion again, come out and it reminds you. And it was just like one little thing like that, that we did, you know, scoring a goal in a soccer game brought so much pleasure to like everyone around the country. It was, uh, it, that was a pretty amazing feeling. And, you know, you realize how, how many people it reached. Um, it's just soccer, you know, so it was, it was awesome. So you're back in Chicago, the game against Poland uh, on Saturday at Soldier Field, and then against Columbia three days later. 
it's the start of the of a new uh, four year cycle getting ready for the World Cup in 2014. Where do these two games fit into the start of that process? Well, it's good we're playing quality opponents again. Um, you know, I, I think U.S. Soccer has done a really good job with that over the years because, uh, you know, we, we like to try and get wins, but I think playing against quality opponents is more important. Be, we, you know, we played the likes of Argentina, Spain, and England, I think, that, that one summer. Um, you know, we didn't have great results, but, you know, games like that, that's what you face in the World Cup down the road. So, you know, getting, getting tough games against, you know, big teams and, and um, you know, putting yourself in situations where, you know, the crowd, the atmosphere, putting guys under pressure and testing, testing uh, now some of the younger guys that will be coming into the team, uh, those are all good experiences, and that all helps us out you know, for four years down the road in the World Cup. So you're now you're, you're in France. You're playing at Saint Etienne. You moved there this summer, a club that's got a lot of a, a huge history, but hadn't been doing well up until this season. Now you you were going into this weekend. You were in the first place. What's been that the transition like moving to Saint Etienne? Oh, that's cool. I love France as a country in general. Um, so you know, moving to another team in France that wasn't so difficult, but. Our coach is quite young. He's about 44 years old, and uh, he's tight with the players, and we have a good group of veterans uh, with a mix of, of some youngsters, so they bring the energy, and uh, it's working out really well for us right now. We're, we're playing well, and we're getting the breaks, and you know, other teams are hitting the crossbar, and it's going out instead of going in, so um, you know, we'll just kind of keep going, but I'm loving the area. It's, it's close to the south of France, a three-hour drive, uh, which I love. The beach is down there. Um, can get to Geneva in a few hours uh, by car or train, so it's a it's a sweet location. And like I said, I'm loving France, and you know I'd like to become fluent before before I leave um, and come back. As good as the food as you say in France, you you still miss the Mexican food back here. In I Chicago, do miss right? the Mexican food here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a that's a favorite of mine. Lalo's. I love Lalo's from Chicago. I don't know if you guys have been there. <laughs> uh, I ate there a lot when I was playing here. Um, no, I love it, but Mexican food is, is fantastic. Last question for you, Carlos. You started your career in Chicago. You've now played seven years in, in Europe at Fulham and, and at uh, Rennes and saint Etienne. Someday could you see yourself back in the Chicago Fire uniform? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if, uh, if the Chicago Fire would have me back, I would love to come here. Can you come next week? Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Carlos Bocanegra.